Heaviside gives his idea on what science is, is really about in his era, in he, very complicated uh, statements. There is no self-contained theory possible apart from practical meaning. For a language is used in its enunciation, which implies that developed ideas and complicated processes of thought are already in existence besides the general experience associated therewith. We define things in a phrase using words. These words hail to be explained by other words and so on forever in a complicated maze. There is no bottom to anything. We are all antipodians and upside down. The misinterpretation of J.J. Thompson's discovery of the electron greatly hampered the understanding of electricity. And in 1900, Steinmetz summarizes the situation in one of his books. He says, unfortunately, to a large extent in dealing with the dielectric field, the prehistoric conception of the electrostatic charge on the conductor still exists, and thereby its use destroys the analogy between the two components of the electric field, the magnetic and the dielectric, and make the consideration of the dielectric field unnecessary complicated. In actuality, it eliminates the dielectric field and makes it so that you can't calculate it and substitutes electron flow in its place. Wires are not conductors of electricity. This misconception of so-called conductors or wires carrying electricity like water in a pipe was continuously attacked by Heaviside in his writings. The entire article is written on the matter titled, titled A Perfect Conductor is a Perfect Obstructor, but does not absorb the electromagnetic energy of the waves. Heaviside states, it was discovered by mathematical reasoning that when an electric current is started in a wire, it begins entirely at its skin, in fact, upon the outside of the skin, and that, in consequence, Sufficiently, rapidly impressed fluctuations of the current keep to the skin of the wire and do not sensibly penetrate its interior. The concept of electron flow in wires rather than electrical field flow around the wires can be related to seeing the footprints of the invisible man in the snow. Heavisid says now, very few, if any, mathematical electricians, he's writing this in about 1890, very few, if any, mathematical electricians could understand this fact. Many of them neither understand it or believe it. Even many who do believe it so do not, do not because they are told so, I believe, simply because they can in the least feel positive about the truth of their own knowledge. An eminent practitioner remarked after prolonged skepticism, if Sir Thompson says so, who can doubt it? What a world of worldly wisdom lies in that remark. That's Heaviside's quote. The relativists, with their concept of distorted measurement, or curved space, replacing an ether, and their concept of the equity of matter and energy, work great harm into electrical sciences. A post-Maxwellian theory of electromagnetism was to prevail, ignoring the works of Tesla and J.J. Thompson. Tesla states, for more than 18 years, I have been reading treatises, reports of scientific transactions, and articles on Hertz wave theory to keep myself informed, but they've always impressed me of works of fiction. Energy matter equivalency, as propounded by the relativists, serves to distort the proper understanding of the continuity of energy as represented by Heaviside. The false doctrines of the law of conservation of energy has a deleterious impact on the findings of Steinmetz and others that electrical energy can be synthesized. Relativism sought to eliminate the concept of electricity in its entirety through the denial of the concept of the ether and plunged science into a giant glut of platonic thinking and thereby established a type of religion called quantum mysticism. It seeks the creation of a spiritual entity such as a goddess in which to engender its framework of thinking. The influence, somewhat forceful, of the British thinking on science has been also a serious impediment upon the growth of electrical science. Foremost was the British Association, establishing a distorted system of units, ohms, farads, and what have you, represent, representing electrical quantities. The effects were disastrous. Arbitrary factors such as four pi or the speed of light squared stuck to the electrical units like crap on shoes. The relativists took these parasitic factors, which have no meaning in real terms, 
and fabricated an entire way of thinking out of them. Heaviside used the phrase, the brain-wasting perversity of the British. Euler describes British thinking on gravity as, the English maintain that attraction is a property essential to all bodies, mutually to approach as if they were impelled by feeling. Other philosophers consider this opinion as absurd and contrary to the principles of rational philosophy. What was happening is, is the British were trying to say there was nothing in between the objects that attract, such as magnets, that it was purely the bodies themselves and space in between was void of any acting material, which has to be complete nonsense if you're going to deal with electricity. That's where the ether comes in. English national